Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here. And welcome to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. Now, this could be a decently interesting week. Looking at the um, the ticker down below, we can see that everything is actually pulling back except for Plex, and uh, that with fanfests coming closer and closer. Um, it's it's an interesting uh, given. So yeah, let's uh, let's quickly head to the couch and uh, go take a look at the market for this week. Uh, especially Tritanium uh, apparently breaking the mold there, that, that is something that is a little bit worrying. But we will start with Plex. Uh, Plex are up to 816 million. It's still okay, uh, percentage wise uh, the move is not that big. If I take a quick look here at the 6 month chart you can actually see that uh, it is a flattening out in, in the bracket between 800 million and 820 million. So nothing too dramatic just yet. Um, the nice spike and the correction right here uh, that did happen with the uh, winter release but uh, you can see that Plex are actually holding a little bit above um, the, uh, the range that they actually come from six months ago so there is no major pullback there is no Plex going back towards 500 million or anything like that or at least there is no sign of that just yet um, the market is decently supplied at least for now um, if I look at some of the supply numbers right here, look at that 76 plex still being dumped, 10, 10, 10. It's pretty good. Uh, on the buy order side, they're smaller, but of course everyone would like to have some plex. So that, that is actually very difficult to, to break through this. And people are still willing to spend 800 million on plexes, no problem. <clears throat> um, it will have a lot of uses coming with FanFist, so that could actually be a little bit of upward pressure. On the other hand, of course, we could also see a Plex sale, which could uh, which which could mean more supply and thus lower Plex prices. This big order of 76 at 816, though, is something uh, pretty interesting um, that could actually put a little bit of a ceiling on Plexes for uh, maybe a few days or something like that. It's a decently large order, and. Um, and the market may need a little bit of time to chew through that but if you look at daily averages you know uh, plexus that get sold every day in jita is around 2000 so um, if if people decide that well um, 800 how much was it 816 is, is a good price for plex then uh, those will be gone uh, in a matter of hours so that's a possibility as well yeah it's a very volatile uh, market a fast moving market with decently large volumes compared to the individual orders i would say um, but we are holding on uh, below 820 which I do think is in and of itself decent news for people that look to um, keep their account going with Plex. Uh, let's move on to some minerals then as I've said. Oh and I actually should really write down the times. So that's three minutes. <clears throat> um, so let's start here with Tritanium which as I've said is down to 6 0.02 ISK for the sellers, 595 for the buyers. So it does look like 6 ISK is coming into view. Uh, there is still uh, quite a bit of supply here, 100 million, 155 million. Pretty decent. The buy order numbers though, 300 million, 640 million, and 500 million. A little bit more demand than supply, but the numbers still keep coming despite the fact that. Uh, tritanium is going down a little bit. Let's have a quick look here, maybe at the one month chart. Here on the six month chart, you can see trailing off at the tail end right here. On the one month chart, you can see we start at 625. We're heading towards 6 ISK here. So, yeah, be a little bit careful. I'm still seeing more demand, so there is still some support. Uh, but it the price dropped below 6 ISK, so it does look like people have already let go of that price mark. Uh, when it comes to the buy orders and yeah it's it's a difficult situation here uh, we could really see a pullback in tritanium if we see the same thing in the other minerals well it might just be a general trend so let's move on here to uh, pyrite that started at 1250 i mean this is still part of of uh, of a, a decline that's been going on a little bit before that i think well actually no not not that hectic we have the same spike here but yeah slowly pulling back here as well it would seem um, pyrite starting at 1250 ending at 1210 on the chart and you can see that the five day moving average is staying below the 20 day moving average and so we could really start to see a pullback let's see 1211 uh, for the sellers 1197 for the buyers buy orders below 12 isk maybe not uh, an unimportant uh, bit of information supply demand here um, 
for the the recent orders it seems decently balanced i mean 54 20 40 and here we've got 26 40 11 that's sort of okay uh, a bit lower we do have 500 million 200 million um and nothing like close to that so 1 140 right here for the for the sellers um so again maybe a slight edge on on the uh, demand side but there is obviously some downward pressure and buyers going below 12 isk is not a good sign let's have a look at mixalon next again here the one more chart starting at 62.2 ending at 61.4 that's nothing too dramatic um, but what i do see right here is that in the last week the average five day moving average moved above the 20 day moving average but it's already heading back down so if we're currently seeing prices closer to 61 isk i would put mixalon in line with the rest and yep sellers actually 59.41 61 isk 61.12 uh, buyers starting at 59.4 so yeah this this pressure on minerals uh, seems to really have started and there is some uh, lower prices coming for mixalon if i if i read this information correctly supply demand on mixalon also pretty much balanced uh, where i would still give a slight edge to tritanium and pyrite on the demand side here you know 20 10 right here 13 and then 30 here we've got 20 30 19 30 again so that feels pretty much balanced and um yeah the the actual numbers for sellers and buyers are below this chart so this chart still lags behind a little bit that does tend to happen um and um yeah for now all the high minerals i'm seeing a little bit of a decline in price let's have a look at isogen and finally starting above 127 ending at 125 let's have a look at the actual prices to see if there is some pressure again here though crossing the five uh, the 20 day moving average so i do think that that is a strong indication yep 125.68 for the sellers 121.84 for the buyers definitely um although it's still only four isk in margin it feels to me like the margin is uh, becoming a little bit larger so uh, maybe there are not that many really new uh, buy orders let me have a quick look here yeah here, look at that the third one is already at 86 days uh, the fourth one i'm sorry there's three recent ones that still try to come with new buy orders the numbers 8 million here that's not bad so it, it is slow uh, it's not a complete crash of the market but the uh, the downward pressure on the price for all high seek minerals i'm seeing it happen across the board i'm a little bit surprised by that uh, personally uh, but maybe after the, the rush uh, during the winter where we had probably a lot of new players with the trailer um, right now there is a bit less demand for everything if people start to well take a break um, or just give up after their trial account and uh, maybe one or two months or something like that so it, it is possible that general activity declines a little bit and then it is normal that minerals go down um, some so i'm seeing this pressure let's have a look at the more expensive minerals here is noxium again five day moving average crossing 20 day moving average noxium trying to crawl out of a hole uh, honestly if i go for the one year chart i do think we still see yeah starting quite a bit higher than than what we have at the moment you know uh, close to like 750 or something like that for noxium right now it tried to climb out of a hole as low as 540 reaching 620 but again 615 for the seller 605 for the buyers 10 isk margin could be a bit larger not that much but a bit larger than what we usually have uh, recent orders maybe the top five here top five top six so uh, also a little bit uh, slower on the buy order side right here and the uh, the five day moving average um, crossing the 20 day moving average is is never a good sign um, for zydrine here still going down look at that um i wonder if we'll ever see zydrine below 400 isk that would be a, a pretty bad sign for miners everywhere but uh, it is slowly heading there starting at probably 440 445 on price current prices for zydrine yeah 440 so <laughs> managed to hold on but the buyers here look at that 420 i do think that the buyers are, are really starting to lower the margins are becoming uh, a little bit um a little bit larger and just i think just a few weeks ago we had like almost zero margin in zydrine which is something that that was pretty much unseen but it, it looks like it's actually the buyers that are that are saying okay let's let's uh, just slow things down here again let's see if we can get the price a little bit lower or maybe the demand just isn't uh, there or, or that active at the moment 
and so there is this pressure from the buy orders that things apparently are going lower and then here for mega sites you could see it on the ticker already mega site also seriously heading down stayed uh, below the five day moving uh, 20 day moving average for quite a little bit here and now it's as low as 750 for mega site so 770 for the buyers uh, for the sellers i'm sorry 732 0.88 for the buyers that's actually pretty low and look at that <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> here are the recent ones one two three uh, all of these are decently recent actually people are trying uh to to pick up some cheap mega site i do think so um but yeah still decent margin you know 36 high scale margin between sellers and the buyers uh, I, I see, I'm seeing the pressure on the buy order side of minerals at the moment and so everything is apparently going down. Pretty interesting. Let's see how this translates to take one chips. Uh, 1045. 1045, there we go. Uh, Caracal, well that one just knew a big spike, um, it is correcting average Caracal price, I would put that at 10.5 million, still 10.8 uh, million for Caracals on the sellers, uh, above 10 million for the buyers, so Caracal holding pretty strong uh, after after this, this spike right here, so that's, that's not a bad sign. Here is the Dominics, slowly trending up for the month actually, starting at 190, 190 uh, probably the average price out think for the Dominics uh, but uh, yeah at 193 at the moment so also up a little bit uh, 187 yeah 194 for the sellers interesting let's have a look here at the Drake the Drake is correcting a little bit the only one that that is maybe following uh, there may be other reasons of course but the only one so far that seems to be following the minerals a little bit so I would say be careful of course you, we know what's happening with the minerals or what's very likely to happen with the minerals um, it could be that uh, just lagging behind by one or two weeks, all of the take one ships could uh, have an impact from that. The Drake here is going down, but still uh, maybe a six month chart could be a better indication. As you can see, only heading towards its normal average of probably 47, 46 million for a Drake. The buyers 45, sellers 47.5. Um, so that's like right, right in the middle of that. So it's just heading back towards its median for now. Um, here is the, the Myrmidon. Um, yeah, I'm just basically holding at 50.5 million, I would say 51.5 and, and 48.7. Yeah, looks pretty normal. And here is the rupture. The rupture actually taking off a uh, little bit of a lack of supply here. No, 11, 11 million for ruptures. That's maybe the changes. And uh, does the rupture have a bonus? Yeah, the projectile turrets. That's probably the changes announced with Tiamat, where the uh, where. Well, actually, I thought it was small artilleries, but maybe it's all the artilleries. I'm not 100% sure. Could be a, an impact right there. Maybe some rupture fits could become a bit better because of the changes coming in Tiamat. Um, otherwise, maybe someone came in, bought a huge amount of ruptures for another fleet or something like that, and the price is up. But we're not seeing the same thing as what we saw in the minerals here. Here's the Talos actually holding at 76 million, which is pretty high for the Talos. I think a more average normal price is at 72 million so that's still not bad but um yeah actually look at that uh, 78 million someone bought a lot of talosses but i would say be a little bit careful here with the take one market knowing what's happening with the mineral market um the good days may just be over if the minerals actually really start to decline in the upcoming weeks be a little bit careful when it comes to the take one market next up take two 1345 uh let's see if we can find some trade opportunities here yeah basilisk you want to sell that right here uh, beautiful double spike since uh, early December so showing the trade potential of the logistics cruisers right here take two logistics cruisers pretty pretty damn good um, basilisk going at the moment for like 194 million you'll probably be able to sell those not bad if you consider that you could have bought them probably close to 170 so 20 25 million in profit on a trade like that in a matter of well this is maybe three weeks not bad at all here is the guardian chart then um, that's a little bit strange that it didn't go that low but you can clearly see the spiky behavior i think i mean starting at 170 135 165 back down to 135 another spike right here 
um, something really low close to 130 right there uh, for a period in December then taking off to 150 and now meandering a little bit so uh, the, the, the profits seem to be a little bit lower um, the buy orders have actually also come in line with the sellers close to 150 so I would say be careful I, I think um, that the triggers are close to 130 or 135 I think Guardian is set for a little bit of a, of a slower correction um, but I think supply will come trying to take advantage of the 150 million price that the Guardians are going for at the moment. Here is the Hound chart coming off of a, a smaller spike, but still uh, a decent trade opportunity right here. So uh, prices, price wise, 18 million on the buy order sides. And as you can see, someone all of a sudden paying 18. Well, actually, that's on, in a different station. But yeah, 18 million buy orders for a Hound. That's right here right here at the bottom of the chart so by opportunity probably if you look at all of these spikes with opportunities to sell hounds for well over 20 million could be pretty good here is the manticore charts um well 20.7 maybe a little bit early uh, i think there are better opportunities to buy them um we are off of a, a double spike here as well but we have this weird anomaly where Manticores went as low as 19 million. So maybe the market needs a little bit of time to uh, readjust itself and, and find its, its balance again. Um, but I still think a little bit too high on the buyers here. Here is the Nemesis uh, going up. So 22 million sellers for the Nemesis. I think that's where the opportunity lies. Uh, it's not as drastic as uh, what we saw for the Hound spike wise. But you can see that there are still some opportunities in the Nemesis at the moment though. I wouldn't buy them, I try to sell them. Here is the Nighthawk, that one command ship that I still keep an eye on. Interesting that it is going down here at the tail end. But until we're really seeing um, sellers drop their price significantly, I don't think we, I'm looking at, at command ships at the moment. Here is the Oniros, uh, also going down after a little spike. So maybe, let's see where the buy orders are, 157, where is that on the chart? Maybe a little bit high, you know, closer to 150, I think, uh, you'll find that opportunity at some point. Here is the purifier also going down. Uh, buyers, 18 million, below 18 million, I think that's interesting, um, considering where it comes from. Uh, not as spiky of a chart here once again, but the opportunities to sell above 20 million are definitely present. You can buy them for 18 million, so I'd say that's not looking that bad. Um, and here is the scimitar. Uh, just uh, like about a month ago, you could buy scimitars close to 135 million. They're currently going for 150.5 million. Not bad, you know, that's uh, definitely more than 10% on your buy order price. Uh, scimitars in sell order territory at the moment. So yeah, there you go, guys. Quick look at some trade opportunities in the tech 2 market. I think there's a little bit for people that want need to sell some ships and people that want to invest some ISK uh, for some trades. Looking pretty good. Next up, the tech 3 market. Um, 18 minutes. On that one, let's have a look here at the Confessor, but honestly, it's it's such a young ship that uh, this is just going to hold on right at the 50 million mark uh, for now. So I, I don't suspect that there is going to be any movements until Tiamat, where the next tactical destroyer is going to be deployed, the Minmatar one, the Zvipul. Um, I think until then, this is just going to stay exactly where it is. Uh, the Legion going down, so it is finally happening after the big spike. Uh, a little bit of a correction over supply coming back here with 10, 14, uh, 8 here, 9 here. So uh, in the Legion, correction because of oversupply. I'm finally seeing it. Man, that took a while. Here is the Loki. Obviously also correcting after a nice spike. 58 of them, 20, 13, 40. You can see that uh, the producers of Tech 3 ships, uh, I mean that, that supply, that production is still very much present. Um, I guess the really the deployment of the confessor did throw a wrench in the whole machine uh, causing that huge spike and uh, very good opportunity of course for some people um, and it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen when the next tactical destroyer will be deployed here is the proteus also correcting supply 22 8 10 those are the three most recent orders like less than 15 minutes ago or something like that. maybe uh, 
17 minutes ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, those are pretty damn big numbers uh, coming in here. They're putting a lot of pressure on the price. I was expecting this to happen at some point. It just happened maybe like a week later than what I thought. Here is the Tengu, um, also clearly going down from its spike. Uh, let's have a look at the supply here. Eight, two, three, one. All of this, the entire front page. In fact, I'm still at less than 14 hours right here. Less than 24 hours is all the way up to here. And then we've got 29, 23, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> oh my God, that's probably one person. That That's probably one person. This is what I do sometimes when I have a lot of, of goods to sell. I try different price brackets just to make sure that I sell some of them. And so this one... If assuming it's a single producer bringing 40 of them to the market, uh, he actually brought the price down by 3 million on a single uh, supply run of, of, uh, of 40 Tengus. Here then we've got 29 of them. You know, he's going to say, okay, you will try and sell them for 191. Here we go, 29 of them for 190. And here we've got another 12 and then we get another 8. So the pressure is on, the oversupply is back. And um, I do think that this will be the situation until the Tiamat release with the new strategic cruiser where everything could maybe be um, in trouble again. One aspect on this though, I think uh, if it's the exact same blueprint you need to invent towards a, a confessor blueprint copy that you use for the Zippel and the other destroyers, the impact is obviously going to be a lot lower than what we have now. And it could even be that there's not going to be any impact at all. I think that's in the cards if, uh, if, if the producers don't actually need to do anything different from now in order to produce uh, those new uh, destroyers. So yeah, there we go. Tick tree market, that oversupply finally taking over. Once again, I was expecting it sooner, but it's finally happening. And then for our extra uh, for this week, I've chosen something out of personal interest uh, because there was so much talk about all the skins. I'm going to take a look at some of the skins battleships and see what kind of, of extra price is being asked for those. So that was at 21.30 and battleships, standard battleships. Let's start with the Amar. We've got the Abaddon right here going for 205 million on the sellers. And here we've got an Abaddon Kador edition going for 227 so 20 a bit more than 20 million in margin right there for a Kador skin um, I really like how this looks though totally worth uh, some ISK 20 million 10% on that honestly feels pretty damn reasonable um, a bad and Tashmer con edition 260 and 265 that's uh, quite a bit more of a margin um, I do think well, you get that from the store, I think, Tashmer Gaunt. So, uh, yeah, not bad. Look at that. You could actually make some, some decent ISK off of it. Is it worth it compared to the arm you're going to spend on the skin? I don't know. Is it still going to be worth it at the moment with the new system that is in the works? Not sure either, but yeah, but, uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, the margin is so different. Here is the rock going for 200 million. The new... Nugovi edition going for 278 not bad that's actually pretty big um, personally not a huge fan of the skin but um, okay I guess because it makes it look that different that it's got a nice margin on this and here is the Virkomi edition going for 238 million so still a decent margin a lot more than the, than the abandoned Kedor edition um, how does that one look like yeah, a lot more plain than uh, than the previous one. So maybe that's the reason, um, which I'm a little bit surprised by. Here is the Dominic's going for 194. Dominic's Grave Edition, unfortunately, not on the market yet. People do want to buy them, and so do I. Uh, I think that this actually looks pretty damn great. Um, nice little can of Grave uh, floating in space there, very shiny. Um, I'm I'm going to keep an eye out for for a good opportunity for a Dominic's Grave Edition. Uh, after FanFest, um, Hyperion going for 217, Aliastra Edition 263 million, only two on the market, Inner Zone Shipping going for 247, so again, pretty decent margin. I would call this the more extreme skin though, Inner Zone Shipping, um, so compared to, well actually the Aliastra Edition looks really cool of course, because it's black, so that's maybe why it's a bit more popular and a bit more expensive. And uh, do we have a Megatron Quave Edition? Oh, we actually have those on the market. Look at that. 
and going for 1.5 billion really <laughs> and uh, normal make it 170 million and yeah 1.5 billion ouch that's a little bit uh, expensive for my wallet um, next up uh, it's the Mealstrums right here going for 178 cheapest battleship uh, I've uh, covered so far here's the cruise wall edition going for 215 the look of it well honestly a little bit darker but still decently plain so not that big of a margin and here is the Nefantar edition going for 185 even smaller margin despite the fact that it's actually a little bit white grayish I think that that actually looks pretty cool uh, and makes it stand out so well it's not on all of them the Minimatars lagging behind a little bit when it comes to the skins and the margins on their skins uh, but I think it's pretty interesting. I think most of these prices are actually reasonable except for the Megatron Quave edition But of course we are talking about uh, a FanFist exclusive right there um, So that is normal that they try and really get some uh, some awesome numbers for that uh, but there, I don't know, uh, I'd have to do more research to see if and there's some actual money to be made on, on the skins and of course what is the new skinning system going to mean for for this type of activity, this, this market, um, if they actually replace blueprint copies with an actual skin, which is decently unlikely, I think. I mean, it, it, it'll depend on how CCP is going to implement the new skin system uh, and what they're going to do with the current one. Um, and I actually think that that's going to be pretty damn interesting because uh, that's something where they have to make sure that they do it the right way because otherwise people that have actually spent money on uh, on, on skins from the store are going to feel cheated uh, so CCP will want to make the right decision on that anyways that's it for this if talk guys thank you very much for watching I'll see you all next time